Glastonbury, I had to go as a girl. Part 3. We had arrived at Glasto. James and I were now a couple. Would James treat me like his girlfriend? We had made it to the Glastonbury Festival, and what an exciting place it was. Three main stages for acts, a fairground, circus, shops, bars, and much more. It was like a small town. I had got into the psych using Charlotte's ticket and we had set up our tent, which was just big enough for the air mattress and the cozy two-person sleeping bag. On our way to the site, we had stopped at a service centre for toilets, food and drinks. I had always fancied James, and now I was his girlfriend, Charlotte. I decided, now was the time to show him how I felt about him, and I kissed him. He didn't know what to do at first, and he pushed me away. But then he kissed me back and from there on, he was like a little boy, fawning over me as the girl of his dreams. We were going to be a couple for the whole festival, and when we got back to our tent on the first night. Yes, he made love to me for the first time. Me and Charlotte see through baby doll nighty, with us bouncing about on the air mattress. It was fantastic. I forget how many times we did it, but James was like a man possessed. When I awoke the following day, James was squeezed up against my back in the double sleeping bag, with his hand on one of my false breasts. I could feel something stiff between my legs, and I soon found out what it was. He did a couple more rounds with me before the airbed deflated. We were both dying for the toilets and a shower by then. We got ourselves together as best we could in the little tent and headed out. I headed to the ladies, of course, and James to the gents. I had to queue for the toilets and the showers, but I eventually got to both. I did my ones and twos, and then had a shower in lukewarm water. I felt so refreshed afterwards and ready for the new day. I returned to the tent and James was already dressed. He was busy cooking sausages over a little gas stove. I went into the tent and looked through Charlotte's bag. I soon found her underwear, a little white flowery skirt with pink flowers and a white crop top. I put some cream on my bum, it was a bit sore from all the exercise, it had been having. I put on a pair of white frilly panties and tucked everything well away. The crop top was elasticated, so I went without a bra. My breasts were stuck in place so well, they wouldn't be moving anywhere. The nipples on my breasts pointed out through the crop top, which I loved. I pulled the flowery skirt on and it felt so good. My midriff was exposed between the skirt and crop top, and it looked so sweet. I put on a pair of white trainers and headed out to James for breakfast. The sausages were ready along with some baked beans and bread. James commented on how nice I looked, although I hadn't done my makeup or hair yet. We sat together eating our breakfast which was lovely. We talked about what we would do during the day and the acts we would see. I think James had something else on his mind. His shorts had this bulge which meant only one thing. He was getting excited again. He was sitting opposite me, and my skirt had risen up, showing my white panties. I pulled him back into the tent, we kissed, and I sat on him. I had extra sausage that morning for breakfast. We were a bit late getting to the first acts on stage, but we were both smiling and happy. James held my hand, kissed me and squeezed my bum several times during the day. I was loving all his attention to me. I really was his girlfriend. As promised to the other Charlotte, he took lots of photos. Most were of me looking like Charlotte, some selfies of us both hugging and kissing in passionate embraces. I wondered whether he would send them all to Charlotte, as it looked like I had really taken Charlotte's place for everything, which I had of course. There was nothing James was doing with me, that he wouldn't have done with the other Charlotte. I was his girlfriend now. I was loving every minute of being with James, the way he kissed me every five minutes, held my hand as we walked around the site, held me around the waist and giving my bum a little squeeze. I would put my arms around his neck, kissing him passionately and rubbing my groin against his bulge to get him excited. I had always dreamed of one day being James's girlfriend, and here I am living my dream. I didn't want Glasto to ever end. I wanted to stay Charlotte and be with James forever. 
the next couple of days were like I was in heaven. We went to see as many of the acts as possible and especially the headliners. Because I was short, James would put me on his shoulders to watch the main acts. I think we even got on television as the cameras panned down on us. He would hold my legs around his shoulders, and sometimes his hand would run up my thigh and under my skirt. That was so exciting, you can imagine. We managed to patch the air bed and pump it up again. We got so drunk most nights, and James sent intimate photos of us to Charlotte by mistake. I think she saw everything James was doing to me. I just laughed when he sent them, I was so drunk, neither of us cared. My poor bottom had never had so much attention, but I didn't care, I just wanted more. We both woke up late the day after the festival had finished. The air bed was on its dying days, and most people had left or were packing up. We got our bags packed and picked up everything we wanted to take back with us. The airbed got left behind, but I did blow it a kiss, it had been my best friend for days. All that bouncing around had burst the airbed and left a lasting impression on certain parts of my anatomy. It had certainly been a week to remember. We packed everything in the car, and it took ages to leave the site and get back to the motorway to head back north. We chatted so much on the way back, like a couple in love. James didn't know what to do about the real Charlotte, after all she had seen some pretty, intimate photos of James going where no man had been before. He was my first man on the moon. Charlotte had sent James several texts, telling him she didn't want to ever see him again, and his new girlfriend could keep the case full of clothes. She wanted nothing else to do with him. It was late when we got back home, he helped me into my flat with the suitcase and I got him to stay the night. He was afraid to go back to the real Charlotte, and the flat they shared with each other. The next morning when we woke, he didn't know what to do. All his clothes, laptop, everything was at the flat with Charlotte. He would have to go and collect everything. I wanted him to stay with me, obviously, in my flat as lovers. After pacing up and down and wondering what to do. He worked up the courage and he decided to go, to get his things. I stayed in my flat, I couldn't get involved. He seemed to be gone for ages, and I was getting ready to call the police. Then I saw his car pull up outside the flat. Did he have a shiner? Talk about a black eye, Charlotte must have hit him with her leg cast. He brought his belongings up to the flat, and I found some frozen peas to put on his eye. I had to nurse and comfort him for some time, but I could tell when he felt better. Soon my panties were off, and he was feeling his old self again. Of course, I was pleased to help him, what girlfriend wouldn't. The next few weeks turned into months. I never did go back to being Sean. I just wanted to be a girl. I got my name changed to Charlotte. I think it suited me. Everyone was surprised when I turned up at work as a girl, and more so when I told them I was living with my boyfriend James. It wasn't plain sailing though, not everything went well. Our families were the hardest to see as a couple. It was difficult for some time but eventually they came to accept us, as we were. I started taking hormones. I became a lovely girl with my own breasts and a lovely girly figure, although that didn't take much. Shaving started to be less often, and I let my hair grow long and got it styled girly. James didn't want me to get rid of my boy thing. He said he liked me the way I was. Every year now we'll be going back to Glasgow, a new air bed every time of course. We decided to get married after a year together. I wore a fabulous wedding dress and James looked so smart in his suit. All our families had accepted the situation by then, and my dad walked me down the aisle. He seemed to be so proud of me. He even danced with me at the reception. I was now his daughter Charlotte and a pretty one as well. We already have our tickets for our honeymoon. Yes, the 2024 Glastonbury Festival. We might take a spare air bed this time, well it will be our honeymoon. If you like my stories, please give me a like 
and subscribe to my channel. Story written and produced by Phil Gurley.